Hey everybody, Norm over here, and we're sitting on the couch with an old friend of mine that I've known for a long time. 40 years. That's right, the great <laughs> Vince Gill. We got Nick Dias over here and Mark Agnesi, and uh, Vince is playing this uh, crummy Rosewood Sorry about the <laughs> These reissues are oh, they're really, <laughs> really nailing it. They're really getting it done, aren't they? Kind of a one of a kind with yeah. a horseshoe uh, on the uh, end of the fingerboard. Rosewood from 19, what was it, 40? 1941. That's the guitar 40? on the cover this, of uh, Norm's new book right there. That's yeah. the one Norm's holding on the cover of the book. Please kill me. Which I've read. It's you read it? Yeah, heck yeah. Oh, man. Absolutely. I, I'm telling you, I need an illiterary agent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Things so, uh, and Vince is out here playing with this uh, band you might not have ever heard of. The, Just getting started. This. The Eagles. <laughs> a lot of promise. A lot of promise. Some and good Mark songs was there. I was on last, last night. It was a great show, man. Uh, okay. You had some good guitars out there. How many did you bring? Because I remember there was the gold top. And the 59 burst. There was a burst tally. and a gold top. Yeah. Wow. And the, the telly. And there was the Lake Placid strat. Blue. Lake Placid Blue Series 2 Thin Line Telly. That actually is a, a Charles Whitfield guitar. Oh, that's not a. Okay, yeah. that, was, that was a cool guitar. Yeah. But. Uh, and, man, yeah. and what? Triple O with Martin's, that Triple O 18. Those and quados that, quados. Those the Georgia. We got one of those over yeah, there. Yeah, those yeah. are cool. And uh, they're made out. They've got that uh, Indian. Uh, no, what is it called? Uh, what's the name of that wood? Sinker. Sinker mahogany, he calls it. They call it. They found this wood from 100 years ago. And, Wow. And whatever, and they're making some guitars out of it. And they sound, sound amazing. Good, no? They really do. There's, you know, truth, truth in 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 the age of that wood. It really makes a difference. So there is something to this old guitar stuff. Right? <laughs> there sure is. My ears haven't lied to me yet. And <laughs> so, Mark, what are you holding over here? This is a 28 triple O 45. First year for uh, for steel string. That's right. So this is when they really start getting hip. Start bracing. Wow. Yeah. Can handle the big string. And Nick over there has an OM 18 from 1932 shaded top. Very unusual. Guitar. Gorgeous, and it's light as a feather. And uh, we're acoustic out, acousticing yeah. out. We're kumbaya. -ing. That's right. <laughs> so it's a, it's a guitar love kind of thing over here. You know? So, and it's great to see. You. And so you're enjoying this Eagles. Oh right? man, it's unbelievable. A few good tunes. Uh, how long was how long is that? Thing? Was it two and a half, two and a half hours? hours? Yeah. It was just like one after another after it's, another. And just when you think they're done, then Joe does a couple of tunes, yeah, solo tunes, and then Henley does a couple of solo there's, tunes. It, and there's a lot of times I just it look just over never and ends. Go, what am I doing up here? You know? <laughs> well, you yeah. are the most logical Perfect guy yeah. Yeah. there ever Thanks. was. You know, it's so. been a lot of fun. Glenn was a great friend of mine, and, and for. Yeah. 35, 40 years, and uh, so. And if you close your eyes, man, Deacon, yeah, you look just, you, like, you look just yeah, like him, it sounds just yeah. like him, and it's like, yeah, you'd be with Blood you. is blood, man, yeah. it's pretty cool, yeah. so. Oh, yeah. That's great, yeah, it's been fun. What a legacy to, ca yeah. to get yeah. to carry on. Just so, to, do yeah. you carry a lot more guitars than what Mark saw there, or Not is so that much. pretty much? I mean, I just, I usually carry what I need, you uh -huh. know, and, and my role isn't, isn't that guitar, uh, that much guitar oriented as much as it is singing. Because they've got Stuart Smith, who's a world-class guitar player, has been playing with him for he 18 years. He had a bunch years. of stuff out too. He yeah, had a lot Stuart's of great. He he's played on um, he's played on my records over the years. We've been friends for over 30 years, and and him and Joe kind of handled the the majority of the of the step out stuff. Hmm. Although you ripped a couple, yeah, you ripped a couple, ripped a couple last there. night. Let me pretty. have a couple. <laughs> So now you got a neighbor in Nashville, Joe Bonamassa moved down yeah. there. Yeah, Joe and I are friends, have been friends. We mutual friend that played my band for a long time, Michael Rhodes, plays bass. Michael Rhodes, oh, great, yeah. great He's an amazing Fabulous. player. And, yeah. and Joe and I recorded some together. He cut one of my songs a few years ago, and I went and played cool. on a couple of songs on, on one of his records. I can't remember the name of the record, but that's a that's the real deal, boy. That guy yeah, can Yeah, he go. can play. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. I've known him since he was 12. When really? He was killing yeah. at that point. You can tell. You know, there's just... It's in the midst, guys like that, you know. Absolutely. So like you were originally from Oklahoma, uh -huh. and then you moved out here when you were how old? Nineteen. I came out here and, and joined the bluegrass band with a fiddle player named Byron Burlot. One of the greats. It took a lot of courage to be nineteen year old, nineteen years old, and move here hmm. with a banjo. <laughs> <That's simple>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I stayed out here for about eight years. I really loved it. Played with Byron for a long time and played with Pure Prairie League for a few years and then started making my own records in the early 80s. And playing with other people like Rodney Crowell, Roseanne Cash, a little bit with Emmy and 
So right. that, that whole core of people were all out here at the time. Do you know Roseanne's husband? John yeah, Levin. Johnny Leventhal, amazing you, guitar player. He's a great guitar player, yeah. and he produced a record that is like one of my favorite records in the last, I don't know how many years, um, with a uh, guy who used to be with Stax, William Bell. William mm -hmm. Bell. Yeah. Did you hear that record? I don't know it, no. Oh, but I know it's just fantastic. stunning. Yeah. Uh, the horns are like, you know, it sounds like old Stax horns. Yeah. horns, but it's very lean and clean, and William Bell's one of the great singers right. of all time. And he's hanging with a talented guy, John, is yeah. a great mind for orchestration and arranging and just what's necessary. You know, it was, it was funny, I'm friends with Jimmy Vivino, and when I heard that record, this William Bell record, I immediately called Jimmy and I said, hey man, did you hear this record? You're going to love this. And then uh, I said, this guy, John Leventhal, he says, oh, I'm buddies with John, blah, 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 and all that. And he gave me John's number, and I just called him up out of the blue. I didn't know John at all, and I just said, man, i got to congratulate you, man, you did, mm -hmm. you know, one of my all-time favorite records. And, yeah. uh, he and he was really cool that he came out here and we met yeah. I think yeah. you gave everybody a copy, copy of that record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, he was right. passing them out. Like. Yeah, I first came That's to know great. John through uh, his association with Sean Coleman. He played on a lot uh -huh. of his early records. He produced him, I think. I don't know. Talented man. Well, one of the greats and yeah. just gets a tremendous tone. He's got that telly with a humbucker in there. And, There's one know. on every corner, isn't there? Yeah, sure is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell yeah. everybody at home. I said, be nice to that guy serving you breakfast. He's probably better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get never know. Yeah. Bitch, can you strum a little bit on that thing? Oh, you know, I just my love God, to hear yeah, you, the tone this. of this thing is. It just blossoms wow. into all yeah. sorts of I know, overtones and there's nothing and, else you need to say. Uh, and a great instrument beautiful. like that, the way where you get to sit and hear it is. There's no other place. I mean, it's pretty cool to stand, sit in front of a guitar and hear it too. You hear it differently. Yeah. But when it's against you and, and man, they you feel really it. Really speak. Feel it breathe. Yeah. Wow. And you hear great guitars like this, and you, a lot of times people associate guitars that are loud with being great. And it's and it's Volume and tone, tone are two different. Yeah, yeah two different. And concepts. you just hear how, how good that would sound on a record. Just with that length of that sustain and it's like spinal tap you know, have a it's still going. So it'd be better if I could tune it. <laughs> You're looking at the wrong guy, but you <laughs> might have given me. Well, I just gotta say thank you, it's an honor as it's always. always good to see you, you know, always trying always to see you, out see you boys. All right. Great well, to meet you. Pleasure. All right, the man. great Vince Gill. If you haven't seen the Eagles, yeah, you work. gotta go see yeah. him. They got the the best of the best over here, and the band has got the best tunes, and they got some really great singing and great playing, and worth seeing. Thanks. Cheers, guys.